Hello, welcome back. This is David and we're doing some more acrylic painting today and last time we made this cool mountainscape with uh, you know a few layers of mountains and I had some cool looking dragons flying around. Hopefully yours came out better than mine even. I'm sure it did. This week we're gonna work on some more canvas again. We're gonna do a, kind of a spooky painting for the season, for the fall season. But it's going to work similar to our painting from last week where we work um, on gradation in the background and then work on layers. So get out a canvas, get your paints out, of course get a palette, a cup of water, your easel, and uh, maybe some paper towels. Alright, let's get to painting. Okay, for colors on your palette, I want you to squirt out a little bit of black, some ultramarine blue, some purple, crimson, a little bit of the naphthol red, and just a little bit of yellow. And we're going to start off at the top by using a little bit of black and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Get your brush wet, nice and wet, just not dripping wet, but mostly wet. We'll go in, we'll start with our blue by just going across, back and forth. Get it going. Just start with some of that color moving in. And most likely we'll have to do a second coat like we did last week. But we'll see how it goes once we get going. You always want to you know, maybe things work out perfect the first time, you never know. You always want to give it a shot. But while we're moving up here with this, I want you to take a little bit of the black and start mixing that in a little bit on the top here. And just start moving it down into the other parts. Keep getting some water on your brush, going back in with the blue. And really kind of smooth that black out into it. And start coming in with the purple now. Get some of that purple moving through there. We want to have a kind of a night sky where the sun has just gone down. So you see how I just keep moving in and out of these colors. Smoothing it out more and more. Go back in, get more water. Smooth it out some more. And now I think we can start moving into some red. We want to have a nice, colorful, lively background here. We're going to start moving into some red here. And if this doesn't turn out the way you want it the first time, you know, of course it's a painting. You can always just let it dry and paint over it. Try it again. But I'm pretty sure you could probably get it right the first time. And if you just keep going like I'm doing, you see how I'm just keep going left and right, back and forth. You just keep going back and forth. You get that nice gradation. As long as you don't jump around you go from the bottom all the way to the top or vice versa from the top all the way to the bottom you should be fine and let's get a little more red out here that's looking pretty good so now i'm going to start moving into a lighter color though so i want to wash my brush off just a little bit and grab you know some paper towels maybe just to wipe it off a little bit. It's okay if some of that paint is still on your brush, but you don't want a lot of that purple on there. If we start moving into the orange color that we want down here at the bottom. You see I started with that naphthol red and then just started moving it into that crimson color. Get a little more of that red down here. And Let's finish it off with a little bit of yellow at the bottom. And of course, we don't want it to be yellow. We want it to be like an orange color. 
looking pretty good. Not too bad for the first try. You can always pop it up off of the easel a little bit just to get that little bit at the bottom. But you're not, you're, we're gonna paint over, you know, somewhere around here for the bottom. So you don't have to go all the way to the bottom if you don't want to. I'm just doing it to do it. But I think it makes it easier for me to visualize it all. And then I can start going like this all the way from the bottom again to the top and just keep smoothing it left and right and left and right and left and right. All right. Now I think I want it a little darker near the top still though. So we can go back in with a little more black. And while it's like this, we can smooth it out. But you can always do like what I'm doing here where I'm dipping it back into the blue and putting that blue on top of that black. There we go. Nice dark night sky near the top. That looks pretty good. All right. So now I don't think we need another coat on this. So of course, wash off your big brush here. And then I want you to squirt out a little bit of white, just a little bit to start with. You can always get some more later. Hmm. Something about like maybe this much should be pretty good. We're not going to use the big brush here. Now I'm going to go into a smaller brush using the number eight here. This one here, kind of the long skinny one. And we're going to use some white to make some clouds. So go in and start doing kind of motions like this, so like circular motions, because clouds are kind of light and fluffy near the top. And just find, you know, kind of let it meander a little bit and move around. And of course, keep dipping back into the paint and the water so that it keeps moving really well. There we go. Now with clouds, the way to make like realistic clouds kind of is to have it lighter near the top and darker at the bottom. And you just kind of keep moving it in a circle for a little while until it kind of blends in really well with your background color. I'm gonna let you see how I'm letting it kind of get darker as I go across the painting. I'm doing that on purpose. So like maybe the clouds kind of fade out and then I can come back in around here. This is what's called a wet into wet technique. Working it while it's still really wet. We want that dark near the bottom. So now you see I'm coming in and grabbing a little bit of that bottom part and not moving too much into the top. I'm kind of just letting that this bottom bit kind of blend in with my clouds here. Going in and getting that darker color and letting that kind of blend in together. But still, you know, I still kind of move my hand in like this kind of curvy motion. You know, you want to have that, keep that curvy motion going. It makes it look more like it's rounder or fluffier. You know, a lot of the time the way that you move your brush really illustrates what you're painting. <clears throat> so I'm smoothing this out a little bit more, letting it darken a little bit in most of the spots, but still, you can still see I'm like keeping the tops kind of lighter than the bottom. And now I'm gonna wash off my brush a little bit more and come in with a little more white. But this time I'm gonna just do like one or two brush strokes and let it be. And go back in and get some more white here and there. 
and you see how I'm just doing like one or two brush strokes here just along the top so I can have that nice brighter white near the top and not blending it in and just kind of letting it sit there along the top. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. I'm gonna blend it in in a few spots though where it gets a little too harsh, like right around there. You know, you don't wanna have real harsh lines in between, you know, your white and your other colors. But you can have like little streaky bits, like maybe here, there's a little spot where the light hits the top of the cloud. You know, a little bit of random brush strokes here and there are pretty good. Just not too many. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, let's put in some more clouds. I want a few more clouds around here. So wash your brush off though to get that purple off. It's probably not gonna matter right away, you know, when we go down to here and I put in more clouds, but it would matter if we came down here. But even so, like it's, it's just a good habit to get into to wash your brushes you know, whenever you move into a new color, especially like if you're working on it wet into wet like this, it's real easy to take like a dark color from up here and move it down here. And then, you know, it's all polluted in there. We don't want that to happen. So you see how I'm just kind of, to start with when I do it, I'm just kind of throwing that paint into that other color and just kind of moving it around a bit. Not really worrying too much at the start of like where it sits and what it looks like to begin with. I think maybe we'll make the clouds get a little bigger on this side this time. And you know, there isn't a rule on like how big your cloud should be or any of that stuff. You know, that's kind of up to you how big and where you want them. But I'm just showing you like how to do it. And kind of just keep Smoothing it out in different spots, smoothing that white in. Yeah. And now, I think I've got a little too much white on the brush, so you can always, you get too much paint on your brush, you can always just wipe it off. Now I'm gonna go in and start smoothing this out a bit. And you see, now I'm paying a little more attention to how my brush strokes move. Get a little more water on the brush. So we don't have these spots kind of like here. You don't want it, you want, really want to avoid those spots where you can kind of see the little dots on it. Like you see the canvas shining through a little bit. You want to try and avoid those spots while still kind of, you know, keeping your hand moving like mine as it kind of just kind of goes in like this curved motion, either on the bottom or on the top or on the sides. And always keep going back in and getting your brush wet. The paint is drying even now while we're working. So you got to keep getting it a little wet so that it'll keep moving the way you want it to. Keep getting it a little wet, you know, of course not dripping, but a little wet just to keep it moving really well. We want to start getting some of that darkness into our clouds a bit there. Those look pretty good. Now we can go in with some lightness on the top and find some spots to just kind of work in some lighter bits on the top. There we go. Always go back in and get some more water on the brush, of course. I know I sound a little bit like a broken record on that part, but it is really important with with uh, acrylic painting to keep your brush nice and wet. That way your paint really kind of moves like oil paints. And acrylic paints were made to be a safe alternative to oil paints. Um, you know, it kind of turned out a little different because acrylics don't exactly work like oil paints in many ways but in some ways <clears throat> in some ways they really do though like here it works if you keep it wet like this it really does work like oil paints oil paints will take you know days to dry sometimes acrylic paints will dry pretty quickly within you know 15 20 minutes but if you're working on it like this 
it's really similar to oil painting here. And let's get just a little more lightness over here on this top. We'll put in a few streaky bits over here. Kind of smooth them out. You know, don't have those little bits of canvas showing through. But you can have little streaky bits of white here and there. Just adds a little more dimension to your clouds. Those look pretty good. I think I do want to kind of smooth this out a little bit though. So I'm going to wipe some of that paint off of my brush. And you know, right now this is similar to like a dry brush technique. When I go in and smooth it out like this, or it is a dry brush technique, you know, when I go in and smooth it out like this. All right, I'm going to put in one more little bit of clouds near the bottom if it is still wet. Yes, it is still wet. So let's go ahead and put in a few more clouds just near the bottom here. Oh, I had a little drip. You want to try and avoid those drips. You know, you got to kind of sometimes bat your brush against the side of your cup there. All right. Let's go in with a little more clouds. I think I'm going to limit the clouds a bit more down here because a good amount of this might be painted over. So I'm thinking, you know, with this painting, we'll have like a hill back here that kind of comes down and then maybe a tree that comes out here. I'm just kind of guessing at that part, but you know, it's good to have a little bit of planning and forethought, like I said, with your acrylic paintings. But it, you, you can have some freedom to make it up as you go to. Oh, I had a little drippy bit. That's why sometimes it's good to have that paper towel around to catch those little drippy bits. Little drippy bits. Okay. You see how I'm still kind of moving my brush in that, you know, kind of rounded half circle motions. Just because, you know, that's what clouds kind of look like. When, when you're painting something, you want to think of like, what does it kind of almost feel like? What would it feel like to touch this cloud? You know, it'd feel soft and kind of rounded. And so that's kind of how you want to paint it in. You know, go rounded with your brush strokes and try and get them to be pretty soft. There we go. I don't want to go too far with these clouds, like I said, because I'm going to paint over them mostly. Not all of it, but a good amount. That looks pretty good. And then we'll just go in with a little bit of white near some of the tops of them. Here and there. And then just kind of smooth that bit out a bit. Smooth that bit out a bit. There we go. Looking good. All right. I like the way that is. Get it to the point where you like it. Um, of course, if, you know, right here it's a little kind of see-through. If you have too many spots that are see-through, you know, of course you can go over it again with more color. Or you can just add into it. Like right now I'm going to add just a little bit of that crimson into it. But remember to always get water on your brush, but not too much. Especially now, like you don't want it dripping. So I don't want to drip into my clouds here. But I do want to go over this spot with a little more color right now before it all dries. And before I start painting into it. So I am going to go back in with a little more color here. Just because I want it to darken up a little bit. But it is a lot harder to do this when I'm trying not to get into my clouds there. But I'm going to throw in just a touch of white on the tip of my brush here. And that is going to make it a little more 
opaque. You see, I maybe put a little too much in there, but that's okay. Don't worry about it because I can always come back in with more paint on top of it. You see how I just dipped it into that red and the crimson and then just brought it up a little more there. It's better to do this before you put in like your clouds or anything like that, but this came out fine. It looks fine. Looks fine to me. You see, even here, I'm still just doing this left to right motion. There we go. All right, I'm gonna leave that now. We've gotta let all of this dry before we go back and paint on top of it. So it's gonna be a good 15, 20 minutes to let this dry, and then we'll come back in and paint the rest of the painting on top of it. So take this opportunity to probably go and wash your palette out now too. You know, it's really hard to get some of that paint out of there if it dries. So wash this out, let this dry. Okay, our background is dry now. Dry to the touch. I let it sit for a good 20 minutes. I've got some black squirted out onto my palette here. Now I'm going to use my big round brush because I want to get like a nice crisp line right away the first time. So I get this brush pretty wet just so it's not dripping too much. <clears throat> go in with some black and then I go back into the water and go back in and put it back into the paint. And so I'm going to start off with like a little hill that's kind of back here and then it's going to come out a little more over there. So when I do this, I always just start off right away just with that crisp line, trying to get that good line. And I turn my brush around sometimes. You see here it starts to fade out. That's when I go back into the water and back into the paint and come back in with a nice crisp line there. And then I just turn my brush a little bit and then try and finish it off. You see there it's starting to fade out again. So then I gotta go back into the water, back into the paint. Go back in and go over that. So I get that nice crisp line. All right, there we go. Beautiful. We got our nice hill. I'm going to put a little house, I don't know, maybe it'll be about this big on the hill here. And we'll have some other stuff going on. But I want this all black. So I can try and use this paint brush and try and paint it in all black. That's up to you. But I don't want to be here forever. So that's when I'll go back and get my big brush. Lift this up a little bit so I can get to the bottom. Oh, it's stuck a little bit. There we go. Like I said, I don't want to be doing this forever. We're going to have to do a couple coats probably. Just because you can see it's kind of transparent. I didn't let it be enough. I put too much water on my brush, I think, in some spots here. Um, so I will have to go over it again. We'll have to let this dry and go over it again. but it's mostly pretty good. You can always try and just add more paint to it, but if it's really watery like mine is, you're gonna have to just let it dry and re, you know, put it in a second coat. But we'll just leave it that way right now. Wash our brushes off. Wipe them off on some paper towels. And let's get a little more black out. We'll use this little smaller brush. Now I'm gonna move to my real smaller brush here. You know, just so I can get 
some detail here. I'm gonna go in, and you can make up the, any of this however you want, but I'm gonna go in, we're gonna put a tiny little house, a tiny spooky little house right here. It's up on the hill, who knows what craziness could happen in this house. Make sure to always keep getting your brush wet though, even like these small brushes. They work the same way as your bigger brush. So you always want to keep it wet to get a nice crisp line. And I'm gonna exaggerate this house a little bit. You know, it's kind of in my imagination, however I want it. So I'm going to make it kind of flare out at the top. You know, of course, like a, a real house doesn't do this. But I am making it a little bigger near the top. Just to kind of make it, you know, kind of like a exaggerated spookiness to the house. We'll go in with the roof here. Get a nice pointy roof on it. Gotta keep going back into that water though. Oops, oh, I dropped my brush all over my place. Keep going back into the water though. Get that spooky little house in there. Let's see, what else could we do to this house to make it even spookier? Maybe it's got like a front porch or like a front area. We'll go in, let's see, maybe we'll put something else like about here that kind of comes out of the house. Maybe it's like another addition. We'll put a little roof on it. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go and I want you to do the same. You don't have to put in the house exactly the way I've done it. You can make it however you want. I'm just putting it in to have a spooky house up on the hill. And then maybe this spooky house also has like, I don't know, maybe like a little fence that comes out about here or so. So you see I'm turning my brush and I'm trying to keep a nice point on it. And if you keep your brush really wet but not dripping, you should be able to get it, you know, right the first or second time by just gently going in with it. Need a little more paint there. but you can always go in and redo it. Let's see. Uh, it looks more like a pier than a fence, but we'll kind of leave it kind of mysterious, I guess. I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe we'll put like a little bitty fence around the back here too. But you could put in like little gravestones or something, that'd be kind of spooky. Maybe it, is right on the edge of a graveyard or something. It's a really spooky area right there. Who knows? That's kind of all up to you. Now, for the foreground, or closer to us, I wanna have a tree right here. So we're gonna put a tree that kinda of comes over here. So I'm, I'm gonna keep this brush, but I also wanna use a bigger one to start with. So I'm gonna go back to this one here Get it a little wet, get some paint on it. We're gonna put in a tree. Now when you paint a tree, the thing to remember about trees is they're always bigger at the bottom than they are at the top. And as long as your, your lines keep getting thinner near the top, you're gonna make a fine tree. So I'm gonna start off here with the trunk and it's kind of fat and you see I'm pushing down kind of hard on it. And letting it 
get more gentle as I go near the top. So when you push down, you know, you get a fatter line and then I can kind of twist my brush and kind of get more of a thinner line, you know, by just twisting the brush here so it goes up and down like this. But I'll start off like here. Let's see, we have the tree kind of come out like that. There's no like set way that a tree will form. We want kind of a spooky tree, so it, it's going to kind of look a little misshapen in some spots. And like I said, as long as it gets thinner near the top than it is at the bottom, you'll have a nice tree. But you're always going to have to keep going back into the water. Get that nice crisp line. We'll have, have it kind of come out this way. And I like to do this before I sometimes I paint it in when I'm not really sure where I'm going with this yet. I kind of like just look at it and be like, oh, maybe if it goes out like here, you know. Kind of gives me a good idea of like what it would look like a little bit. And if it's a little, you know, lumpy in spots, that's the way trees are. They get a little thicker in some spots here and there. We'll have that tree kind of just end right around there, that branch does. And then you want to go back and make it thicker near the base of the tree. And you see there we've got a nice, that's kind of hard to see there, but you know, I'll bring it up even a little closer so you can see a little better. There we go. So you can see how it came out like there. And then right at the end of it, I want it really kind of pointy. So I'll go in with a real small brush and go in and kind of finish the end of it and make it real pointy at the end. And then maybe throw in a couple little branches that move out, you know. I'm just, like I said, I'm just kind of making this up as I go. As long as it gets fatter towards the base of the tree and thinner out at the end, you're going to have a nice looking tree. So I let it get fatter there. And then so I'll thin it out, make it thinner as it goes to the end of the branch. There we go. Nice spooky, spooky tree. Spooky is very spoopy, actually. It's not very spooky, but it is spoopy. Very cute and spoopy. And you can have little branches. They don't all have to be big branches. You can have a little one that just kind of ends like that. It's all kind of up to you where you want to put the branches. I like to have them kind of go around this way. And then you want to go in and darken these spots too. Remember, you work in layers when working with this type of paint. So I can always come back and change it a little bit. Go over some of these spots that are a little transparent. Add a little more here and there. Let's have another branch that kind of goes off this way maybe. And remember, like I said, as long as it gets thick, it goes from like thick to thin. And you don't ever want to, here I'm getting kind of close, so you don't ever want to have a branch that's thicker than your base of the tree. So I might have to go back in and kind of make that base a little thicker now. And this, when you're kind of, making it up as you go as we are with this painting you just have to keep readjusting you know keep observing what you've done and being like okay now how does that change what i did before and do i need to go back and you know alter what i've done before here i'm going back and i'm you know thickening this tree trunk so it's bigger than this branch here now, I like the way that branch goes, so I'm not going to get rid of that. 
And then maybe we need one more branch that kind of comes out the top like this. There we go. I like that. And have it get a little thicker here and then really thin near the top. And you see how I kind of twisted my brush again so that I use the, the side of the brush when I get up here. And then I gently just kind of let it trail off for the end of my branch there. That looks pretty cool. I like that. All right, maybe we need another branch over here. Just using the side of my brush and then letting it kind of trail off at the end. And we maybe want another branch that kind of comes out here, but not too big. That's about perfect. And if you know you get you use a bigger brush and you get it kind of perfect the first time, but it's not opaque enough, it's transparent, you can go in with a smaller brush and kind of fill it in a little bit with the smaller brush. There we go. And then maybe we want like a little branch that comes off here and get it thicker there. And then maybe one more branch comes off here. I don't know. Like I said, you make it up kind of as you go. As long as it goes thinner on the ends to thicker in the middle. That looks pretty good. I like it quite a bit. Now, this part is drying, but it's still pretty wet. So I'm going to leave that for now. Wash this brush off. There's one other spooky little thing I want to add to it to make it really kind of spooky. And that's some bats. We need like some bats flying around in the spookiness. And we'll put them down here and just kind of go like in this shape and this shape. Just kind of make like some little M's, lowercase M's. And as long as you keep dipping your brush into the water and back into the paint, you should be able to get like some good clean lines the first time. There we go. I'll go back in and make the tail a little bigger. And then we'll go in and put his head in. So that it'll come up like here. And then about like there. I don't paint many bats, so maybe this one isn't perfect. But you can always just look at a picture and do one. There we go. Cute little bat. Cute little bat flying around there. It almost looks like the Batman symbol. Little cutie bat. And we could put in a, a few more that are even smaller, like in the background over here. Maybe there's just like real tiny bats way in the back over there. Little tiny ones. And I'll put in maybe another tiny one and kind of going this way. You can put in as many bats as you want. I'm only going to go with a few. It's because I don't want it to be overtaken with bats. But if that's what you want, go ahead and do it. Looks pretty good, but we're not done yet. I've got to do another layer down here. So I'm gonna get, not my biggest brush, I'm gonna get one of my bigger brushes though. And go in and we'll go over this black again. Yeah, it's still pretty wet. So I think I'm gonna have to let it dry and go over it another time. Well, maybe not, actually it's taken pretty well there. It's mostly dry already, so I think I could probably go over it now if I just use a little more paint and a little less water when I'm painting over it. There we go. Yeah, it's not so see-through now. And that's all I want. I just want it to be kind of opaque. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
it just kind of so you don't see through it so much. Not bad, not bad. There's a little bit of a spot over here that I might not be able to get. Maybe, I don't know. We're not really going to know until it dries. I might have to go over it just a little bit more after it's dry. But we're going to leave it like that for now. One last little thing I want to do. But I think I got to wait till this is dry. It's almost dry. But it's not quite dry. So I'm going to let that dry for about five minutes. And I'm going to come back and we're going to put one last little thing in. So I've let this dry a little bit. I've got just a tiny little bit of yellow on my palette. Get some water on my tiny little brush. I'm going to go in. And if you ever want to get your brush, you know, to a nice point, you get a lot of paint on it, maybe... You want to get a little of that off. You kind of just twist it a little bit around your palette there. I'm going to go in now and we're going to put in a little spooky little light that's shining through the top of our house here. We got something going on in there. I'm just making four little squares. And then so that kind of looks like a window. You know, it's because the windows have those crossbars on it. Most windows do, especially old timey windows. There's an old timey spooky house. Old timey. Um, yeah, so I got that little window there. We can put another little window over here, maybe. I'll put another one here. Just four little squares of yellow will get you a cool looking window. They don't have to be perfect either. The thing to remember when you're doing a painting too is most people don't look at things that closely. They kind of just glance at it and they're like, oh yeah. So if your little windows like mine aren't perfect, like nobody's really going to care because they're not going to look at it that closely. So I kind of like to just, you know, do it once with something like this and let it be. If it's something that I can't really paint over or I could paint over it, but I got to let it dry and it's going to be a whole process. I kind of just let it be what it is, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to kind of let it be what I got here and leave it. All right. And then we could be even a little spookier, and we need to put some little, tiny little eyes on our bat. You know, maybe this one's got a little yellow eyes or something, too. I don't know. Be creative with it. Put in whatever spookiness you want to put in. We could have lots of other things along here. I want to let you kind of make that up. You could have some owls or maybe there's some bats, you know, up in the tree here. Who knows? It's up to you. But I think this spooky painting came out pretty nice. I want you to finish it off however you want. You could put a moon up in the sky if you want. There could be another tree back here. You know, the idea that is important with this painting, though, is that things that are farther away from you are smaller. Because in real life, like, you know, this tree, if we put them next to the house, like, they should be about the same size. But this tree is so much closer to you, so it's going to be a lot bigger. The house is far off in the distance, you know, so it's going to be smaller. So here's our spooky painting again you know I think it looks a little better in this light maybe you can see it a little better but make it up however you want put in the rest of it however you want every painting that we do 
you know, with this one and the last one, every one that we do on canvas. So there is a lot of it that I want you to make up at the end, you know, make it your own. I just kind of showed you how to put in some of these things, but I want you to try new things. Try something I didn't even think of. Put in something in there. Maybe there's a, you know, a pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern that's like really close to you and it's down here somewhere. I don't know. It's up to you. The main thing to remember is let things dry before you paint on top of them or else it's going to mix together. Even with this black, we let that dry. We can paint on top of it and it'll be fine. You might have to do two coats, but that's okay. It'll be fine. I hope you had fun doing this painting. Um, I will see you next time. Hit me up with an email if you have any questions. And I hope you had fun. Bye.